So aside from watering, planting, propagating, some of the typical stuff you'd expect in the garden, we also like to have the students participate in cooking activities, in different science lessons, and all kinds of um, hands-on things that they might um, find different than what's happening inside their classrooms. So we started last year with wanting to have electricity to power our irrigation clock. And we solved that problem by putting in a uh, large panel. Once we had that installed over the course of the year, we decided that there were a lot of other electrical needs that would be um, things like the pump that we put in the greenhouse. Some of the other things that we need um, electricity for could be a blender, a hot plate, um, even something as simple as um, you know, having a, a charger for a laptop or a Chromebook. Her wishes into what we could do with the solar panels. For example, she wanted to run the irrigation systems and other systems to just help water the garden and help the plants live. And we wanted to convert those into ideas for the solar, solar panels, but it was kind of hard to know which solar panels to go with what systems. And we ended up going with um, a Goal Zero battery and two different solar panels, one to run the irrigation and then one other separate system to run the rest of the activities that she wanted to have at this garden. So we have two batteries in the shed. The larger battery here is a 1250 watt hour uh, battery that is um, powered by the larger panel on the roof. And that again, will be running appliances and the uh, filtration pump in the greenhouse. This smaller battery right here is wired to the 50 watt panel that we recently put on the roof. And again, that is the isolated irrigation control right there. So that'll be running year round uh, during the summer with um, no power drain from blenders or hot plates or whatever else it may be. They can see the panels, they can compare the sizes, they can um, hypothesize about um, how much energy a large panel could collect, how much energy a small panel could collect. They could see how that um, energy is stored. We have a large battery in the shed now and a small battery and they can start to have some um, elementary age appropriate experiences with, with solar power it allowed us to be able to teach the kids about sustainable energy, to be able to demonstrate how to collect the energy from the sun and show them we could store it and then use it to power up stuff. In five years I hope that we have more solar panels both at 2W El Moro and at the high school too and middle school ideally just because it is free energy that we could be using and right now we're not using enough of it. If I were to return in five years I'd like to see a bigger presence of solar energy across the district. So not only would that mean solar panels on all of the buildings powering portable batteries or devices in the classrooms, but also a bigger presence of solar and other renewable resources in the curriculum. I think that renewable uh, energy is a big topic that's going to be a massive field in the future. It isn't really touched on that much, especially in high school classrooms, and I'd like to see that change.